I'm Craig Kenneth, a relationship coach and a psychotherapist. Every relationship is different and every breakup is different. Work with me and you'll get professional help on your situation. And if you're in no contact, focused on personal growth, my creative healing course is filled with hours of exclusive content. Available now at AskCraig.net. Hi there, I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And today we're gonna to be talking about how did you learn to love? Well, we don't really think about this because no. we each have our own familiar way of loving somebody, mm -hmm. but we really learn to love. And it's important to understand how we got to that place mm -hmm and maybe how to push through that to a healthier place. That's right. Because if you don't, you're likely to repeat the same mistakes your parents did. Yikes, that's what we don't want you to do. And considering both my parents were married three times. <laughs> <laughs> no, you don't want to do any I of the same stuff. I could do without no. that. Yeah, yeah, you could. All what right. do you got, Margaret? All right, what I got is I found this an interesting article. It's a little awkward because the woman who wrote it, who's Sasha Strebe, um, was quoting somebody from a speech she gave. And the content is great, and I hope it's organized well enough for you to follow it. Okay. This article focuses on how romantic relationships are influenced by our childhood experiences. Our parents' relationship is our first and most influential example of how to interact and communicate in a romantic relationship. I had never thought about it quite that way before. Mm -hmm. um, I think most of us have thought about it as being so aware of how our parents treat us. But we observe, of course, and see how our parents treat each other. So that's extremely important. How love was shown between parents is influential to the child. That makes sense because when you think about it, your parents are your only example of pretty much everything. Um, when you're really young, you probably accept the way that they do things to be right, even if it's not. That's a, that's a big point. Yes, it is. We just assume that how our parents do things is the way it's supposed to be. Right. And how it happens in every other house. Yeah. yeah. When oftentimes it's not the case at all. Not the case at all. Um, for instance, if your parents were not very affectionate and hardly ever hugged and kissed you, you may have an aversion to affection as an adult. Dr. Bergen continues, children will model and emulate the way parents show love to one another, plus how love was expressed to the child. All of these things are equally significant. Mm -hmm. Okay? Um, and if you have a single parent, you'd miss out on that whole experience of of watching yep you know or if you have an absent or distant dad sometimes you don't get to see what you need to or an absent or distant mom those early years set the bar for how we see give and receive love and what we want out of relationships later in our lives i do believe that how emotionally available our parents were influences the type of attachment we formed with them. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. How available were they? Yeah. Attachment theory suggests that we create an internal working model of our parents that we later internalize as our own sense of self. Now, it's a long time since we talked about the book Attachment, which many of you bought, which is great. Mm -hmm. um, but that talks a lot about a working model that we internalize of what a family should be like. And whatever our parents do, you know, is the model that we internalize. Yes. So we will look for something familiar. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But just because it's familiar doesn't mean it's healthy or good for you. And that's one of the troubles with life in general. We all are drawn to the familiar, whether or not it's what we want. Okay? Mm -hmm. um, all right. How can we break the cycle of negative family culture from childhood? Dr. Bergen offers four pieces of advice. Reading, journaling, looking at your current relationship from a different perspective, and or giving therapy a try. Yep. Read books on psychological researchers 
and specifically read the clinician, Dr. John Gottman, who we talked about earlier today, yep. to learn about the different patterns that lead to positive relationship outcomes mm -hmm. and those that lead to negative relationship outcomes. Now, if your parents are throwing things at each other, that's, that's pretty clear. And, and, you know, you don't want to repeat that. But sometimes there are many more subtle things um, that don't appear right on the surface that we might not think about. Yeah, a lot of subtle things. Yep. One key thing to remember is to learn about healthy ways to manage conflict and better ways to connect with your partner emotionally. Okay? Mm -hmm. If fights become an absolute disaster, um, you know, life isn't good. And how to connect with your partner emotionally. That's a learned skill. We don't automatically know how to do that. No one likes fighting, but you may dread it less if you can argue more constructively. Right? And the first rule of that is if you're going to fight with your partner, don't say, you are terrible and you never do the dishes. What you say is, I feel upset when you don't keep your promise to do the dishes. Mm -hmm. You do I statements instead of saying you and then coming with some accusations. All right. Mm -hmm. Regarding journaling, um, Dr. Bergen advises that you journal and increase your self-awareness of your thoughts, feelings, and behaviors in your relationship. And that's exactly what you'll do in the workbooks. Right. Exactly right. Yes, that's exactly right. And in the right. Creative Healing course, we did the whole story of your life thing. Yes. That's yes. like 40 pages alone. Absolutely. <laughs> um, so I've never been a particular fan of journaling because I've been a trauma therapist. And mm -hmm. if you ask people to write about their trauma alone at home, mm -hmm. you're repeating the trauma. Okay, but for other issues, this points out how very useful it can be. Mm -hmm. So you want to write down um, your thoughts, your feelings, and behaviors in your relationship. Yep. Okay, and that can be most enlightening. Compare what you are noticing with the ways your parents interacted with you and interacted with each other. In other words, is there a familiar ring about what's going on in my relationship and what might have gone on in my parents' relationship? Mm -hmm. Compare what you are noticing with ways your parents interacted with you mm -hmm. and interacted with each other. If you notice that something was missing in your relationship with your parents, reflect on whether or not you are seeking to find it in your current relationship. Mm -hmm. And I believe that comes from Dr. Harbel, mm -hmm. right? In other words, we're always looking for what we wanted to happen in our relationships with parents um, from our partner. Work on trying out new ways of being in your current relationship. Dr. Gottman outlines specific behaviors you can work on in your relationship, mm -hmm. such as asking more in-depth questions, turning toward your partner when he or she makes attempts to connect with you. Yeah. All right. Those attempts to connect are called bids, okay? Mm -hmm. Like you were playing bridge or... You know, at an auction. Mm -hmm. um, if you've had a words, for example, and your partner turns toward you and sort of reaches out to talk about what nice weather we're having today, respond to the bid. Respond to the request to reconnect. Yeah. Okay? Um, to connect Because that's your, how we connect again. Right. This is why we tell you not to ignore an ex. No. When people tell you to ignore your ex, it's extremely childish, and you're not going to be able to have a healthy repair of a connection. No. It's just ridiculous. No. Uh, also express yourself assertively when you feel hurt. Dr. Bergen says, after all, trying new things is never a bad idea, especially if you have been together for a while. Mm -hmm. So do something different together. Be different. Yeah. And I, I believe we've covered some other research that talked about how the novelty of doing things together. Yes. Yeah makes us have chemicals released and yep. we bond over those things. Right. If you've never been canoeing, go canoeing. Yeah. You know? yep. um, if you never played bingo, give it a try. Margaret loves a good canoe. I do. And bingo too. <laughs> she plays bingo on the canoe. <laughs> <laughs> Just don't get too excited or it'll be a short game. Last, and a short canoe trip. <laughs> yes. Last but not least, if you continue to find it difficult to break these patterns, therapy may be necessary. Yeah. A trained therapist can be, in, can be a help to explore any roadblocks to implementing new positive ways to interact. Okay? 
And that's what I have to say about that. Okay. Uh, you know, your parents, our parents affect everything that ever happens to us in our entire lives. And being aware of that can save you years of trouble. And the more you work at it and learn yeah. things, the more you're going to see these little unconscious things that we do, or uh, maybe we argue the same way our parents did, or uh, express our needs the same way, or, or get frustrated the same way, and you can do healthier things. Right. Okay? And if you're trying to repair it with an ex, you have to realize that you were doing a lot of these things with your ex and you got to make sure you do it differently when they come back. Right. Because if you continue to do those old Same patterns, right. you're going to wind up in another breakup, which is why we say put yourself on probation for nine months, even after they come back. I mean, it is just uh, so frustrating for me to see the people that give up on themselves right. once they get their ex back. back yep. Yeah. <clears throat> and it won't work the every, second time either if you haven't done the work. Every once in a while, a person will have a Skype scheduled, and I'll notice that if they cancel the Skype, you know, obviously maybe three or four days beforehand, it'll say, my ex came back. <laughs> you See, need the Skype. You need it now more than ever. You need the Skype. You need it more, more now. Your chances have just increased, and now that they're trying to repair it with you, let me guide you. This is what I want to help you with. So this might be the time you most need. Exactly. Your ex is in contact with you trying to repair it, and now you're going to cancel it? Oh, my gosh, I get so frustrated. Yeah. But they got to learn on their own. Yep. Uh, but if something doesn't work, try something different. If it didn't work for your parents, try something different. Okay? Yeah. Um, but yep. we all tend to go back to those old childhood patterns that our mind tells us to think about. Yeah. Good stuff, though. Hopefully you enjoyed that one and found it helpful. Of course, when you want to get our help personally, just go to my website, askcraig.net. Sign up for the coaching option that works best for you. I do email coaching and I do Skype. Margaret is available for Skype coaching. If you feel that I can be helpful, please sign up. Just click on Margaret on the top of the website to do that. But that's it for this video. I'm Coach Craig Kenneth. I'm Coach Margaret. And we will talk with you soon. To get my help personally, go to AskCraig.net and click on Schedule Coaching and choose the option that works best for you. I do email coaching or Skype. To schedule a coaching with Margaret, click on Margaret on the top of the page and order a Skype with her. For the Knowledge Creative Healing course, click on the link at the top of the page and click Get Started Now.